Hi everyone, Lorenzo Manuel here. Um, today we're going to talk about a very, very cool product. There is this guy in our community, in the community of composers, called Marco Di Stefano. Now, Marco Di Stefano made a software that I think to be one of the coolest things ever come out in the last five to ten years. Of course, I am talking about Flow 2. Now, Flow is a software that basically aims to take your productivity and just really skyrocket it. So he created a template for Cubase and, and it's so modular and it's so integrated well and it's so coded well, because of course we're working in uh, open stage controller, which allows people to program in Java that I consider a game changer when it comes down to sheer productivity. Uh, now he is working on the software, perfecting it, making it even more customizable, even more adjacent to people's needs. And he's collecting a bunch of feedback from uh, all different composers and different professionals. And I personally think just like many that have tried flow Two already, the software is going to take the composer community by storm for a variety of reasons. Now we are going to look into what the software is a little more specifically, what it can do and what it does already. I'm going to talk about a little bit, the pros and cons in my personal workflow. And we're also going to talk about how can the software be made better and what kind of things I wish this software had already or will have in the near future for me to actually make a full swap between my touch OSC uh, setup right here and open stage controller with this template specifically. All right, so let's jump into my main screen. And of course, what we have here is Nuendo, the template that Marco will provide you upon purchasing the product will work either on Nuendo or Cubase. And by the way, guys, just so you know, I did not pay for this software. Marco Di Stefano provided the software for me. So this is sort of a sponsored type of video. I want to be very clear and very upfront that I did not drop a dime on the software. Marco was gracious enough to allow me to try the software for free. And I promise you guys, I will be extremely honest and extremely upfront about the things that I absolutely love about this software, because there are things that I absolutely adore about this thing and how amazing this thing is. And uh, about the things that I wish they were different. If you guys are interested in purchasing this product, we're going to do a 15% off discount code. If you guys go into the checkout and you enter the coupon code Emmanuel, my last name that you see on the YouTube channel, you will get an instant 15% off the product. How cool is that? All right, so what do we see here is just a little bit the front. In the back, I wanna show you something because in the back we have opened the Vienna template that Marco has prepared. So here we have all the instruments and they're all deactivated. So nothing really is weighing on RAM, which is really, really system friendly. And you see here, we have a bunch of different instances of Vienna. All of them are controlled in the background from Flow Plus, in this case, Flow 2 Plus. And this is what you have when you open the open stage controller uh, interface. This is what you're greeted with. You're greeted with a, as you can see here, I already kind of, I was testing something and I already opened a patch. So that technically shouldn't be there in the first place. You won't see anything in here either. Uh, but this is basically what you're greeted with. And at face value, you're like, what the heck is this? Well, let me tell you what this is, because this is really, this is about to get really cool. Now, what we have here is the first window. The first window is folders and libraries. Now, what Marco did here is he organized all the instruments into either folder groups, which are basically related to these guys right here, or per library group. So in folder, if we activate the folder, we press that button and we have all the folders available to us. We can close the folders and that of course translates with into Cubase. You, you're already seeing the potential of this, right? Because if you have this on a touch screen, which I did test by the way, on my touch screen here, and it works flawlessly, this translates to basically uh, shortcut controls and or keystroke controls. So you can open, unfold and fold all your tracks by tapping with your finger on your touch screen. And you can just open one type of folder. You can open 
anything, anything you click on basically corresponds to a control in Cubase. And that alone, that alone is half of the price of this product. Now, what we have here is we're going to open all the libraries and you can already see sort of like the families he grouped it in. Uh, he grouped it into orchestral ensemble stuff. We have the woodwinds, we have the brass, the percussion and strings and the choir. Of course, he created a bass foundation from which then you can go and uh, add your own libraries following, you know, sort of like the nomenclature and the labeling that he's probably he needs to give you uh, on his website as well. You can follow all the steps to add your own libraries to it and add your own controls to it, which is actually really, really effective. And then the second thing is so we can we can go ahead and actually uh close down this control right here and we go by library now this is really cool for me because all you see right here is all the libraries contained in this template aka all the libraries you own quote unquote which means that you know you can take out the ones that you don't own you or you can leave them and just don't use them because they're just sitting there you know the metadata it's there and you see the ones you own and you can add the ones that you uh, already own, but you kind of want to add on top of this. But he's basically giving you a bunch of really popular libraries, you know. So let's move on here. We have the libraries and folder view. Now, in, in terms of controls, we have we can recall attention to a specific library. For instance, say that I want to see only Albion 1. Now I go here and I click on this button right here or on my touch screen, I, I tap on that. And everything that it concerns Albion 1 is right here. And we can see, we can go uh, into, you know, all the MIDI tracks are uh, labeled. Everything is in order. And say that I want to see only the Albion 5 stuff. I click on that and I see the Albion 5. We got all the master tracks with all the various articulation. And by the way, yes, this works with expression maps. So you can switch articulations on the go within this. And I'll show you in a second how that works. Or maybe I want to see just symphonic brass and I just go to symphonic brass and I do that and I see only symphonic brass patches. Boom, right there. Uh, the other controls are I want to see, say, symphonic brass right here and symphonic evolution woodwinds evolution tracks you can see both of them at the same time uh, by pressing the second button and say that i i let's go and see everything i think that's the button to see everything yep uh, and say that i don't want to see symphonic woodwinds and i click that one and that removes symphonic woodwinds uh, from the equation entirely now let's go back and see everything say i don't want to see anything that shows me nothing <laughs> um and then I, by the way, it's the, it's really quick in like actuating the program. The delay that you perceive by from the moment I click to the moment everything happens, that is an internal thing with, with Cubase and Nuendo. It's not actually uh, the template. That's just Nuendo that has to process that command and, and, and fold and unfold a bunch of tracks. So that takes a little bit of CPU power there. To, to actually do because there's a lot of tracks that Nuendo is trying to sort through. These buttons right here are related to the next uh, to the next tab right here. And we're going to see what instruments is all about. Now in the instrument tab, what you're going to see is by instrument. So everything is sorted by instrument. And what that means is that what if I just want alto flutes? Well, I click here and all it's going to show me, it's all my alto flute tracks that I have. Uh, I want to see only the brass section of the of the library, right? And now I see all the brass that I have. Everything that it's under the brass folder, main folder, it shows. But what if I only want to see horns? I only see the horns, right? So pretty straightforward. Now, the cool thing about the next window right here, let's do ba bass flute here. So of the bass flute, what bass flute do I have? How many MIDI tracks do I have of the bass flute? Well, I have these ones and it shows me, it shows me these ones. So if I want bass flutes from this library, I only activate that one. If I have, if I want that one, I only see that one, that one, I only see that one. So, and that is actually a pretty significant thing because you can actually see it at a glance right here. Okay. I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for brass low bam. Uh, how many Breslo I have? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I want this one. Bam. And you get the track that you need, you know? 
And so that's pretty huge in my opinion. So I want to see the brass, all the brass, and I want to see all the percussion. All right. So what I see here, what I clicked is the eye. So I click the eye on the brass and the eye on the percussion, and it, it lets me see everything under percussions and brass, right? All right, so that is what we got right here going on, which is actually pretty awesome. So I'm gonna remove that filter that I put. So basically that's the filter. It's filtering out specific things within this particular window. And then when it does that, it basically tells the next window over to look at the tracks in that specific folder. So I get the percussion filter right here and it shows all the percussion loaded in this particular filter. So it's reading the filter from the previous folder. How cool is that? Now, so let's move on to the next window, which is probably the one that you're gonna spend the most time on while you're actually writing music. And this is the articulation window and the faders window, which not only has faders that have to do with the quick controls, but it also has microphone positions for each and every patch. And it has VST controls for each and every patch. So extra layers of control, extra stuff that you can assign to that. Very, very cool. Now let's go and actually test this out. I selected uh, the Albumon folder and then I went and selected the string high patch right here. And what that did is it allowed me now to look at all the key switches within that patch. Now, if I go and actually activate this track from Vienna. Ooh. If I click the legato. And I'm controlling dynamics. I'm also controlling, I can control expression. I can control the release. So we can go and test even like a shorter patch and see if we have like a, th there we go. Yeah, we got shorter patches right here. We got, we're gonna activate this. We got the brass high. Um, time to load it and we got the legato. Beautiful. We got the longs, long octave, beautiful, beautiful. And then we can see the staccato here, control the release. We have the tightness. Yep, that works. Um, reverb. beautiful. So you have all the controls that you have inside the actual VST panel. There it is. We have, we have our track right here. So this is what that is basically controlling. So if I go into the dynamics, you can see, uh, hello. Yeah, there we go. I'll do that. You can see the dynamic being controlled. Of course, it's a staccato patch and you won't see it, but so I can switch things through through here or I can be smart and switch it through here. It's already all nice and laid out for me. So that's basically what you have. You have a command center at your fingertips for all your VST needs. Now, this is incredibly useful when it comes down to have large orchestrations and even just like having a very, very fast way of controlling your um, your uh, your VSTs. And the nice things about this is that you can plop this onto a touch screen, like I was mentioning before. You can plop this literally on your touch screen, whatever, uh, if you have a touch screen that it's hooked up to a computer or hooked up through a Android device, you can go on a Chrome browser or any browser of your choice you have the page loading that specific uh, interface, which is this one, this interface right here. So you, and then you can control it through your touch screen and you control all your faders through your touch screen and 
everything you basically need. It is uh, being handled by these two windows right here. And you can change down here also, which is another window. Basically, you can change general controls of all tracks. You can put all tracks into mute. You can unmute them. You can solo them. You can unsolo them. You can put the uh, you know read and write functions of your tracks for automations, and then you can start writing automations once it's in read and write mode. You can uh, hide all the tracks, show all the tracks. Basically, it does the same thing that uh, <laughs> this button right here does, which is showing everything, basically. And then you can have controls over your entire template. Also, we should mention the mixer. Now, this is one thing. And as, as I move forward, we're going to go into the things that I wish the software really had. Now, one of my first uh, comments to, um, to Marco was the fact that with all these instruments and with all these groups, because he's giving you also groups uh, and stems, everything is routed through general stems and stuff. So because of that, I told him, look, Cubase has three mix consoles. Nuendo has four mix consoles. Why don't we take advantage of those mix consoles? So you have all the MIDI tracks into the first mix console. Uh, the second mix console is going to be for uh, the various uh, sub stems. So for instance, string high, string mid, string low, or brass high, brass low, and all that. And then the third mix window, it's going to be for the, uh, basically, all the general um stems basically the tutti version right here so you have the brass tutti the person uh, the percussion tutti the string tutti which is basically all the strings sub stems into the main group stem and then for nuendo users you can have uh, the mix uh, console four to do more mastering work like it's laid out to be just you know mastering and you know more advanced mixing and mastering uh, work groups. So for instance, you would have the orchestra group, you have the synthesizer group, you, you can work on individual VCAs. So that was my first comment to him. Uh, also, I did um, fail to mention, you have also selective track functionality here. You can uh, hide the selective track, you may mute, solo, read, and write. So apart from the mixer side, one thing that I really think this software would benefit a ton from is being able to detach windows i don't know how realistic that would be uh but the fact that i can you know i can i can full screen this thing and you know i have all the space that i need this is really uh, a help it becomes a little bit of a secondhand helper when it's on your screen like that you're composing you know with your cubase right here and then you you move your mouse to go into this and activate it with your mouse so this is really thought out to be something touch screen friendly something that you can put on a touch screen and work with uh, that sort of workflow this really comes to life when you have like i was saying a touch screen and one thing i really think needs to be improved is the size of the things you you know you're going to touch these buttons down there needs to be a little bigger anyway so this window right here it's absolutely by far one of my favorite window because you can control uh, everything you can switch while you're playing so you know one one hand is playing the other one is switching uh, the key switches. So that's that's the, the cool thing about that. You can actually mouse wheel over a control and control it if that's how you like to work. Um, but cool that you can do that. So very, very cool uh, idea. Another suggestion that I think this would make a, a very good swap for me would be rethinking a little bit the list windows to be a little more out of the way of the what actually matters to me. Okay, so I left the very, very coolest feature of this software. I want to end with the piece of resistance. This is by far the coolest feature, which is this search function. So you are greeted with this window, and what you can do is basically uh, you select which uh, folders are you going to search in, all right, all the various functions right here. And what you can do and say, hey, I want to find this oboe sound that I know. Which library does it have it? And look at this. It tells you exactly which library has an oboe, what name of the patch is, and you can go in and look at all your libraries that have that specific oboe and and uh, figure out exactly, oh, okay, so Symphonic Woodwinds Extended. That's the one that I like. 
and then you can go and find that into your library. The search function is by far some of the most useful feature when you have large templates and you can't find that specific sound. Now, what he, what Marco said that he's working on right now is that he's going to implement a way that you can actually click on these search results and it leads you straight into the track into your projects, which is mind blowing, which for a DAW controller, this is unheard of. This is absolutely unheard of to have a search function within a DAW controller. So anyway, I hope I did justice to this amazing software because it is truly incredible. More and new features are coming to it. More and more updates are being worked on. And I'm really, really excited to see where this software really it's going to go. So like I said before, guys, if you guys want an instant 15% discount on this software, it's the code Emmanuel. It's E-M-A-N-U-E-L. You put that into the coupon code at checkout and you get an instant 15% off. And I am... Again, so honored and so grateful for this opportunity to have a look at this amazing software uh, that he's creating. Yeah, guys, I hope you guys like this video. Please go and support Marco Di Stefano on his YouTube channel. He has videos on further functionalities of the software, further integrations. I'm going to put all the links in the description. I'm going to put the link to his channel. I'm going to put the link to his website. Anyway, with that being said, guys, please, if you guys like this video, consider supporting my channel, give a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and we will see you to the next one.